Finland, the land of a thousand forests, and you guessed it, thousands of mushrooms. Today we're going on a wild mushroom foraging adventure in this beautiful Nordic wilderness. The country boasts an astonishing variety of edible fungi, and today we're setting out to find and identify a few of them. Before we begin, remember, safety first, never eat a mushroom if you're not 100% sure of its identity. Now let's head into the forest. This area is particularly rich in certain types of mushrooms, thanks to its damp, shady conditions. Let's see what we can find. I've literally just got out of the car, and what do I see? A fly garrick laying on the floor just in front of me. Down here we've got the iconic fly garrick. This one might be past its prime, but this fella has some rich folklore and history behind it. You'll often spot them in coniferous or birch woods. These caps are the most distinctive thing you're going to see in the forest. They're bright red or maybe a little bit orange with these white spots. These white spots are actually the residual cap that these things broke out of. The stem is white with a little skirt ring around it. When you look beneath the mushroom, you'll notice white gills. The flesh is also white. All the books state that this mushroom is highly toxic, but in my opinion, this mushroom is wildly misunderstood as well. I actually make a remedy for sciatica for it, which I'll link into the video if you're interested. I'm really hoping to find some chanterelles today, and chanterelles do actually like some packed ground. I'm gonna follow this road down here and see what I can find. Look at these lovely chanterelles. These are many foragers' favorite mushroom. You'll often find them hiding in moss and under leaves. They're so distinctive with this kind of eggy yellowy cap. It's wavy and funnel shaped. These are actually one of the easiest mushrooms to identify in my opinion. Instead of gills, underneath you've got these thick vein-like ridges. If you cut them open, the best way to describe it is that it's just all one piece of flesh. These are always such an exciting find. I've got a feeling that as the day goes on, I'm gonna be wearing more and more layers. The mosquitoes and the flies are starting to come after me already. Luckily, I've got my trusty hat to keep them off my head. Over here we've got the copper brittle gill. Now in the UK I have never seen one of these, but here in Finland I see them all the time. They start off with this rounded cap, but they do open up as they get older and have a depression in the middle. I'm not really sure how to accurately describe this colour, but you see it here. It's also quite sticky when wet. The flesh of these actually grey when they're exposed to air, and like other risalas, the gills break off a bit like almond flakes. And yes, this one is edible and is actually quite tasty. So much for a nice sunny day, it's raining now, but behind me we've got some hoof fungus. You're gonna find this hardy mushroom growing on tree trunks, particularly birch trees. The cap isn't so much of a cap as well, this hard piece of horse hoof. When you break it open, you'll find it layered with tough flesh. Historically, this was used as a tinder to start fires. It's also been used medicinally. So technically it would be edible, but you're gonna break your teeth trying to munch into this one. Not a mushroom, but I've just come across an elk footprint. Check this out. Look at the size of that. Look at these tiny little oyster mushrooms. These are usually found growing in clusters on dead hardwood trees. The caps have a soft greyish hue to them and they look a bit like an oyster shell, hence the name. The flesh is soft and white and it's actually really tasty. This is again, one of my favorite ones to forage. This yellow little mushroom is the yellow swamp rosala. These things like wet areas, often around swamps and other damp woods. The cap is this bright yellow distinctive color. The stem is usually pretty white. Its gills are white. They're closely packed together as you see here. And like other rosalas, the gills flake away almost like almond flakes. Now this rosala can be eaten, but there are others in the family which are toxic. So like with all mushrooms, you need to keep a level of caution about you. You can't really tell, but I've just hoofed it up quite a big hill, hoping to uh, find something around here. Still got quite a way to go, but it's quite mossy, lots of trees. Let's see what I can find. Another orange birch bullet, another big one here. Don't know if you can see this, but 
To my eyes here, it just looks like a magical setting. Look at this little puffball. You usually find them in meadows or grassy areas and woodlands like we found here. It's pretty much all round with this soft white exterior. This will eventually turn brown though and release spores. Now these are edible, but only when the flesh is nice and white like they are here. I definitely won't be taking this one home with me. Here's another really common one, the wood tuft. You often find this on decaying logs or stump. Now this one is edible, but it looks so similar to the funeral bell, which will kill you. So I've never actually bothered trying to eat these. Although I'm getting to know my mushrooms, if I'm ever not completely sure, I just leave them alone and I recommend you do too. But they are a lovely sight to see in this forest. So that's our foraging trip in the beautiful forests of Finland. I hope this inspires you to explore the natural wonders around you and maybe even find some delicious edible treasures along the way. If you enjoyed this Finnish foraging adventure, don't forget to subscribe for more wild food journeys. And remember, always forage responsibly and sustainably. See you in the next adventure.